everyone, and welcome to an episode of The Bottom Line. I'm your host, Lauren Khalil. Our show is brought to you by Whoop. Check out the description below to join our team or sign up to get a free strap and an extra month's membership with our link. On today's show, we have two former CrossFit Games athletes and longtime individuals in the space, James Hobar and Adrian Conway. We're discussing the recent rehiring of Dave Castro by CrossFit HQ. First, I just want to start with, you know, did this come to a surprise to either of you? James, is someone who works with uh, HQ. Let's start with you. Um, I'm not a hundred percent surprised. I'll say that. <laughs> Would you care to elaborate? <laughs> no, that's, that's probably good enough. That's probably good enough. I, th I feel like in the, in the community, it's been brewing for a while. So hmm. um, yeah. Adrian, what about you? Yeah, I, I would agree. Um, you know, I don't, I don't have probably quite the insight or inside scoop that James might have had to be tipped off. But I will say that from someone on the outside in looking at what was taking place, um, I, I, I was hopeful, honestly, right? That was just something that my heart's desire and my history within the space kind of wanted to see was, okay, is it, but is it really completely done? There's no way, right? There's no way that CrossFit goes on and there's no Dave at all. So I, I was excited about it, and, and I can't say that I saw it happening and how, but I'm super excited that it did. Hmm. You know, when we look at the season as a whole so far, there have been a lot of issues that have been brought up this season, uh, which the community claims came as somewhat of a trickle-down effect after Castro was fired. There were the scoring irregularities and leaderboard issues, standards with movement and judging. Many people have said that none of that would have happened if Castro were here the whole time. James, how do you think that Dave coming back helps resolve some of those issues that so many people in the community have been bringing up yeah i don't think it's as clear cut as that and i think a little that was a little bit of like just like post hoc you know thinking of like well dave ha you know dave was fired and now these bad things are happening it must have been that reason you know and it's that makes sense because it's like when something happens that maybe we don't like it's like it's easy to want to blame all the other you know things that we dislike that happen after that on it so i just don't think it's that simple um and also and i don't know how much has been released <laughs> but i think dave's role is not just going to i don't think dave's role isn't just going to be specifically focused on the games and um, i think that a lot of that has to do with his passion and what he's interested in and it's going to have a broader scope looking more at you know um crossfit's um relationship with affiliates and you know other areas in the company so i, I won't i'll say that he's not just games focused going forward yeah, and we will get into that because we did release um, an article that Dave's role is now an affiliate advisor. So, Adrian, how do you think that that impacts uh, CrossFit and even the game season? I think it specifically impacts CrossFit in a tremendous way. And I say that because Dave was so much the cornerstone of what CrossFit embodied. And I'm not talking about just, you know, his, the, the way he sees things or what he posts on social media. It's from being a member of seminar staff and, and looking to Dave as, you know, a leader and the way that he was able to teach and the way that he served us as a member of that, I think that he's going to take that directly into his role with the affiliates. And I really think, of course, that being a, a, a big con contribution to a, a pillar of success with, with CrossFit in general, that um, the community looked at him as that historical figure and without him in the absence of that, it put them in a bit of an uncomfortable position. So to see him back, I think many of them, maybe not all, but many of them breathe a sigh of relief and they're looking forward to what he'll bring back, knowing that he's been there from the beginning. And James, uh, what is the impact in your opinion of not just having Castro back in the CrossFit HQ space, but um, to the game season, will he be involved in those discussions when it comes to programming and what the entire season is going to look like? Um, to be honest with you, I don't know specifically what his involvement will be. Um, I know our leadership team has shown a lot of confidence in, you know, Justin Bird coming in and stepping into that role, as well as Adrian Bosman. And there are just a long list of people who have been involved with the games, even when Dave was there and have supported it successfully for a long time, and they're still involved. So um, there's a lot of confidence in them. I really don't know what his role will be um, toward the games and to what end he'll be involved with that. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he would want to get back involved with it because I know it's something that he loves and obviously started and has poured so much of his energy into. But um, I also know about Dave, and maybe not everyone knows this, I've had the privilege to see this. He does really care about 
CrossFit affiliates and how the CrossFit community grows. And he likes being a part of that team. So I do expect him to put a lot more energy toward that. So even if he's putting energy towards that, do you think that if, you know, the people programming the games are all in a room and they're looking for advice or or they come up with um, a problem that they're looking for a solution to, do you think that they will reach out to Dave, someone who programmed the games for 15 years to get his insight? Um, I mean, that's certainly a much closer possibility now. I'll give you a political answer. It's a much closer possibility <laughs> now than it was three weeks ago. <laughs> that's what I'll say. I, 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 can I, I think it would be hard. I think it would be hard because Dave is a leader and, and, and is used to a particular role there where his control is at a particular level. And to just go to him even with questions of advice or like, hey, could we tighten this up? He might prefer to say, hey, that's a, that's a stupid workout. I don't even understand why it starts this way. And not that that, that, that would be his response, but I, I think to me, uh, I think it would be a very difficult thing to do. Now, it would involve a lot of humility and he would have to, of course, be able to communicate to make it the best that it would be. And I'm speaking for him at this point, but um, I think that would be hard. It would almost seem as though he might want to stay on the affiliate side and not be so involved on that side if he doesn't get to fulfill the same role that he once did. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think Adrian hits the nail on the head right there. I think as CrossFit continues to grow, it's really important to remember that we can't have single people doing all things. And you're going to see teams start to grow and, you know, multiple individuals maybe take on responsibilities that singular individuals took on in the past. And I've seen that. Um, and it's, you know, there are a lot of people there contributing to um, the successes and new things happening. So, yeah, I think that's probably pretty close to what will happen. So adding Dave back into the mix, where do you both see the sport moving forward, even over the next course of the year? Now that, you know, everybody's getting their ducks in a row, adding more people to the CrossFit team. Hmm. Well, I, th I think one of the big focuses on the sport um, is just to continually grow it internationally. Um, you know, we've seen so much growth there. And again, I don't know, obviously a big part of that will be the growth of affiliates and nurturing affiliates internationally to drive sport growth internationally and make sure it's accessible everywhere. Um, I think that's definitely one of the places you'll see it um, grow. Adrian, where would you like to see it grow? Yeah. Yeah, I, I would love to see, of course, the strengthening of affiliates, I think. And this is I've, I've seen this for throughout the last year and a half or two years where CrossFit HQ is doing a better job at supporting the affiliates at large with regional representatives, uh, people that support them on a day in and day out basis. Because if we can strengthen the number of communities that we already have in existence as they continue to grow outside of that, those will come on more equipped and more prepared to have success. And for me, as a competitor and someone who is so passionate about the sport, the competitive sport of CrossFit, um, I really think being able to tell that clear message uh, or show that clear message of, you know, these international competitors across the world and what they're doing and what it takes to do what they're doing, and then being able to guide people to those affiliates that are in their area is a huge part of the growth that we were able to all see and be a part of from, you know, 2013 to 2018. Um, before some of the changes started to happen. James, what is your bottom line to Dave returning to CrossFit HQ? Um, I'm excited to see Dave come back. And uh, a, lot, a lot of that excitement has to do with the fact that um, I felt like when Dave was fired, he personally had more he still wanted to do in the community. I've known Dave for a long time. So just as someone who got to see someone I consider a friend um, go through something that was pretty difficult. Um, I'm happy for him. So I'm excited to see what happens and uh, to see how the rest of the community reacts. Adrian, what's your bottom line? My bottom line is I am pumped. I'm, I'm super excited. <laughs> Seriously, I, I, I really can't express it enough. I, from a very honest perspective, now I wasn't going to compete in the master's division this year, um, either way, at least at the point. But when, when Dave was no longer a part of it, I literally was less excited about it even more because part of my nostalgia is coming to the games was fist bumping Dave on my way off the floor being like, ah, you didn't <laughs> think we'd do that workout that fast, did you? Or, you know, throwing a jab at him that it, like that experience wasn't going to be there. Now I know it's changing and it's different, but to see him back on board and a part of the team, I couldn't be more excited about. James, Adrian, thank you guys so much for sitting down with me. Um, certainly a conversation we're going to keep talking about. Dave Castro is back and we'll see what's next.